But Matthew chapter number 25 this morning. Begin reading in verse number 14. <clears throat> the Bible says, For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and desired unto them, or delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, and another two, and another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. And then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that received two, he also gained another two. And he that received one went and digged in the earth, and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh, and reckoneth with them. And so he that received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. And his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enterest thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then when he had received the, then when he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answereth and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received my own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance, but from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath, and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, verse number 14, Jesus talking. This entire illustration that he gives is in reference to what? Well, he says, the kingdom of heaven. So, people all the time want to know, well, why did God save us and leave us here? What was God trying to develop? Well, you want to find out? Read this passage. Okay, the kingdom of heaven, according to not Brother Jordan, not according to some philosopher, not according to an evangelist or a book or Joel Osteen, okay? But according to Jesus, very son of God, who is God, said this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. Likened it under this illustration. Verse number 14, we find that there was a master who was traveling far away and he entrusted his business to his servants. Now the first thing we've got to notice here, this Lord was completely capable of handling his own business. But he chose to go away and he chose to entrust his business to his servants. Without a doubt, I guarantee you that this guy could have still managed to run his affairs if he wanted to from a far country. But he chose to entrust his servants. Right? I guarantee you that Jesus is far able above what we can understand that if he wanted to find a way that people could get saved without any of us around he could still do it but he chose to entrust servants with the business of the master okay, well then we find that he distributes or he assigns those duties okay under one he gave five talents under another he gave two and under another one he gave one talent okay, well according to our verses it said that he distributed unto them according to their ability. But I am not, Brother Tommy, much as I like him, not giving my keys to Lucas. Yeah. But I wouldn't give the keys of the car that I have now to 16-year-old me. Okay? Don't know if I still trust 29-year-old me with this, but anyway. Okay, the Lord knows how much you are capable of. 
But the Lord also expects faithfulness. He gives unto you what you have shown and demonstrated to be faithful over. You want to know why one got five, one got two, and one got one? Because that's what they had proven that they could handle. But God sees us as we will be one day, but He also understands that we're not there yet. He also understands that we have limitations. He also understands that sometimes we just choose to be heathens right, and not do what it is that the Lord would have us to do. So He gives unto each one what they have shown to be capable of. Their ability. Okay, you can replace ability there with faithfulness. Because you can have ability, but if you don't use it, what's the point? Right? He didn't give them according to their potential. He gave to them according to their faithfulness. They had ability, but they were given or entrusted with how much ability they had shown that they were faithful to use for their Lord. Right? You can be the smartest person in the world but you don't ever use it you're not all that smart I've known people that don't have book, you know, street smarts but they can rattle off everything under the sun about almost any, any topic guess what they can't use that intellect when they go across the street if they don't look both ways right? some people have an understanding of how to do things but other people are just faithful to do it right? the one who had five talents guess what I, guarantee, I, I dare say we could say he was the most faithful and number two maybe didn't have all of the experience of number one but guess what he was he was faithful he was given two talents and then we'll get to it Here, we'll get to that later hang on we gotta work through the verses first well what happens the Lord goes away and doesn't say how long he's gone but when's the Lord coming back we don't know yet just keep working be faithful but it says after a time he did return and one that had five talents given to him he comes back and he hands the Lord ten talents and he says Lord this is what you gave me and here's what I did and he says here's it all the Lord said well done thou good and faithful enter into the joy of thy Lord the first one comes to him and notice he says, verse number 21, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He says the same exact thing to the man who received two talents and brought back four. Exact same thing. You know what that tells me? That's what he expected. He wasn't caught off guard by five talents being turned into ten and two talents being turned into four what he expected and what's the word that he uses to describe it good faithful and servant well done that's what he expected because if we go and study out this Lord's life according to the third servant he testifies that God's hands just all over this guy he reaps where he doesn't sow right he harvest where he had not strong you know what that means? Whatever he touched, it just happened to turn into gold. Okay, now that's the way that the third servant saw it, but really this man just knew how to get business done. Right? There are some people who just know how to do certain things. Right? I don't know how Brother Ray knows how to climb up a ladder that's you know held together and braced by like one string of uh, floss and you know some duct tape holding it in place, but he can get up there and that thing will be doing this but he can stay on it without falling off. Not me. I don't have that balance. I broke my foot stepping off a curb one time. Okay? It's the only time I've ever broke a bone. In my defense, the curb was this, but then the parking lot was slanted that way. I blame that. But what's the point? Some, some people just blessed and gifted with the ability to do business some people understand you know profit margins they just say well yeah we can't do that because that would cut into the, right that's foreign to me okay some people are mechanically gifted they can look at something and tell you exactly how it works or they can take it apart 
not knowing what it was and then by the time it comes to fix it they figure out what's wrong they know how to put it back not a blueprint in sight those people are freaks of nature okay other people right doesn't matter what it is that you give them they can make a full course meal out of it right well we've got some jelly beans and you know this can of spam and uh, some mayonnaise and then next thing you know there's chicken on the table how's that happen Right? Those are just abilities. Right? You've got abilities. How do I know that? Because God's no respecter of persons. If one person ever had ability, guess what? Everybody was blessed with abilities. Just whether or not you were faithful to see to those, literally. Right? A talent was a current of money, but or a form of money. Okay? But literally, God's given you all talents abilities things that you're good at your knacks right that's just in your wheelhouse okay but also notice all three of these servants had something in common they all worked for the same guy you know what that means they all knew the same expectations they all were instructed the same way they all probably dressed the same to identify them as a servant of the one that they worked for they probably had a residence if not on the Lord's property in his house that these three guys there was very little that differed from them from the outside they may not have had the same upbringing but they had the same education they had the same expectations they had the same teacher what do we say they had the same role model as the master he said while I'm gone do as I would do they had very much in common what was the one thing that made a difference right faithfulness the one that had five talents the one that had two talents but they go out they went out and they did as their master had done they put into practice those things that they had learned from him and even if the one that had five came back with six I believe that the master would have said well done why because it was more than what he had when he left if the one that had two came back with three instead of four I still believe that the master would have said well done if the one that was given one came back and said Lord I tried but I could only make one turn into one maybe there had been a famine maybe there had been some catastrophe where the one you know imagine if instead of what we've got going on now imagine if you went out right now and bought a whole bunch of wood to build a whole bunch of houses and tomorrow the price of wood drops that would have been a bad investment but you could still take that wood that you had already bought granted you paid a whole lot more for it but you could still go out and build stuff with it and sell it he may be able to get back to one talent right he could make something out of what he had but no he went and he dug a hole and put it in the ground he was afraid of losing so he didn't try at all you want to know what the one that had five and the one that had two you know what both of them did they went out and they spent the five and turned what they bought into ten. It's not like they did some magic trick where, oh, look, then one coin, two coins. But they had to use those five talents. Okay, we just mentioned houses. Cars are the same thing. You can go out and you can buy all the pieces that you need down to every single nail and then extras on top of it of what it would take to build a house lay it all out and whatever that price is it's going to be a whole lot cheaper than if you went out and just bought one that was already built not just because of labor but because the sum of all of those parts is worth more than just those individual pieces right? four tires don't do much for you if you don't have four rims to put them on and those rims and tires aren't too good unless they're attached to a car 
Right? You can go out and buy all of those pieces, even if you knew how to put one of them together. And if you had it all laying out there in front of you, still wouldn't be worth as much as one that was probably older, had a little bit of miles on it, right? but it had been taken care of. Why? Because this one moves, and that's just a bunch of parts. So what they do? They went out and they bought pieces, and then, whether through their talent or through the ability of others, they went out and they assembled it into something and then sold it for more than what they had bought it for. Okay, we're going somewhere with this. But the one guy said, I'm too afraid of losing. So he never bought anything. You know what that tells me? He was never in to begin with. He was so afraid of making a mistake that he didn't want to buy anything in case he was wrong. I mean, he could have just taken it, gone out, saved, you know, what, 99.99% of it. Go out and buy a corn seed. Guess what? Corn come up out of ground. Guess what's on corn? More seed. Doesn't say how long that the master was gone. Could have been years. We don't know. Could have been a month. Doesn't matter. The point is that he didn't even try. The master actually lost. You say, well, the master got back what he started with. No. Because if the master had been there and been handling it, that one would have been more than one. And he had expected his servants to do as he would have done. You know what that means? The master came back expecting, let's just say, eight more talents than the eight that he gave out. The master lost. He said, well, what if he would have gone out and he would have failed? I'm sure that the master had failed before or had seen things cast out that didn't come to fruition. He would have been understanding of that. But why did he call him wicked? Because he was slothful. He didn't want to go out and do. He wanted to coast on all the benefits that he already had. We don't find that the servant went starving while the master was gone. We don't find that the servant was without a place to live. The servant had enough dirt where he knew it would be safe that he buried a talent in it. You don't bury something unless you know it's going to be safe there. But we say the servant wasn't hurting while the master was away. He's still living just the same way that he was while the master was there. He had all the benefits of being associated with the master, but he didn't want to be involved in any of the master's business. He said, you're slothful. You only do something when somebody tells you to do it. You're so afraid of making the wrong decision, you don't make any decision. You don't try at all. The reason he was wicked is because he disobeyed the order. What was the order? Do as the master would have done. Well, we said all that to get to this. I mean, he said, at the very least, you could have given my talent to somebody else called a bank. And they could have lent it out. And then when I came back, I'd at least had the interest off of what the bank lended it out for. He said, I had this plus that. He said, you didn't even have to do anything there. But yet you were still so slothful and wicked. Oh no, we're going to go bury it in the back, backyard. Well, it says of the first two, because they were faithful over a few things, that he should make them lords over many things. Doesn't matter if it's five, doesn't matter what two. They both got the same reward. They both received the same commendation, if you will. What was that? Well done. They both got to reap the joy of their Lord. It says, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He said, you get to not only, for lack of a better term, be promoted. He said, I'll make you Lord over many things because you were faithful over a few things. What they both get? Much. Because of their faithfulness, they were rewarded with more responsibility. But then, what's the cream, icing, all that kind of good stuff? 
what was that they got to bask in the joy of their Lord right? they knew that the master was going to come back and the master was going to have more business for them it didn't matter to them if they were doing what they was doing before he left or if he gave them something different to do their prize was not in what they were rewarded with it was in the approval the joy of their Lord these men were servants you know what they lived for the approval of their Lord they were literally but if you were a servant for another person it meant that you left your own identity you left your own responsibilities your own desires and dreams you left them at the door you had one job to do what the master told you to do you know what the greatest reward for a servant is that the master says well done and just starts bragging on them for a little bit that, that he's happy with them he's going to show them off to the rest of the town he's going to say hey while I was gone these guys did as good a job as I could have done yeah they got promoted they got more responsibility but guess what their true prize was that the Lord was happy with them the one that they gave everything to thought that they were worth everything in the world because they were faithful right, well let's compare this right literally to the kingdom of heaven what is the kingdom of heaven it's that gold silver precious gems that we lay up from down here our treasure could be wood, hay, and stubble. Guess what? It's not going with us. You know what does go with us? Gold, silver, and precious gems. Things that can make it through the fire. Everything else is going to be burned up. You know what I understand? Everything that I own down here, one of these days, it's going to turn to ash. Doesn't matter what thread count the suit has, guess what? It's going to be burned up one day let's be honest I'm probably going to outgrow it this way before long before it ever gets burned up right, let's be honest me walking around with my hands in my pockets guess what I'm probably going to tear a hole from right about here at the V of the pocket and it drives everybody nuts especially Miss Sonny if I ask her to fix them but I know better than that I just still keep doing it I can't stop it what happens I've ruined a lot of suit pants Right, my self worth is not in what I have now. You know what the third servant? You know what his valuable, the thing that he clung to so much was what he already had. He was a servant of this great master. He walked around and thought that he owned the town because of who his Lord was. So when the Lord said, Here, do as I would do, he didn't know what to do because it was all about him and it wasn't about the master he had seen everything else that the other guy had seen but he never learned anything because all he was looking at is wow this is so great not going to lie being a servant to the almighty God it's great but being a servant is not all that he has in store for you right, read your bible read the book of Revelation guess what's going to happen one of these days one of these days each and every one of us is going to stand in front of them we're going to say Lord here's the talents that you gave me right? you may have the talent to walk up and so I, every time I think of somebody like this think like brother Charlie Miller you can walk up to a complete stranger talk to them for three minutes and next thing you know they're your best friend that's just how brother Charlie was it didn't matter who you were where you came from he knew something about either where you came from or something you'd done and next thing you know he's your best friend right? unless you were the pastor because if he found a snake out in the yard somewhere in the church he'd hang it on the church building right by the pastor's door and that was a wicked thing to do but brother Charlie thought it was funny okay? he'd catch snakes all the time around here guess where they'd end up by the preacher they'd be dead but they'd still end up there there's some people just have that ability there are other people that have the ability to just go out and get things done 
Something that should take about 10 hours, they can get it done in about two. How'd they do it? I don't know. They just know how to do things. Right? There are other people that, for whatever reason, right, God's given them an ability to where they can just sit down. I right? don't even have to be up getting around. But they can just start singing a song, and next thing you know, everybody's spirits are lifted in the whole place. There are some people that just have the ability to go out and get a burden about something. Doesn't matter what it is. But whatever that burden is, they make it so much a part of them that they change the way that they live their life so that God will hopefully make whatever burden that they have come to fruition. You say, Brother Jordan, that's a rare thing. huh? You see all the missionaries up there? You know why they did what they did? Because God gave them a burden for it. And they let the burden impact them instead of trying to chip away at their burden. They made it a part of themselves. But there are some people that they can just sit down and read a verse off of a page and you say, well, what's that mean? And the next thing you know, your mind's blown. Because I thought this was a story about a couple of servants. Well, yeah, it is. But it's also a whole lot more. Right? Yeah, she's not in here. I'll tell the story. Teen class the other week. Kenzie was reading a section out of Proverbs. And she said, what's this mean? And it was an analogy where, or no, it wasn't Proverbs. But it was, it was Old Testament. And it was a prophecy from one of the Lord's prophets. And in the, in the prophecy, each nation was represented by a different tree. And Kenzie asked me, she had said, were trees really talking to each other? And I'm like, nope, you got to go back a little bit. You got to start back here and realize it's a metaphor. Okay, each tree represents a different country. But you want to know how she learned that? She had to ask somebody. What do you think? Some people are just so curious that they ask so many questions that eventually they know how to do a lot. Right? Jack of all trades. But how'd they start that way? They had a curiosity. And instead of trying to kill it, they used it for their master's glory, their benefit. Right? There are some people that it doesn't matter what happens. Right? If every song leader in the world were sick today, there's people around here that the pastor could say, you, you do it, and they could pop up and do it. Well, why is that? There's a jack of all trades. And they want to use the ability that God's given for God's glory. Right? We're not going to focus on what God's given you. You know who you are. I will say this, though. <clears throat> Part of being a good servant is this thing called humility, which means you know what you are, but you also know what you aren't. These servants didn't go out and try and be more than what the master was. They did what they knew. They didn't do what they didn't know. If the master was a farmer, they didn't deal with any vineyards. They didn't know nothing about vining. They knew about farming. But if their master was a tradesman, he'd go out and he'd buy the raw material, give it to a merchant to make it, or he'd take these goods and he'd ship them over there and sell them over there for a profit. Whatever it was that the master did, that's what they did. No more, no less. They knew what they were and they didn't try to be anything more. Never going to be a good servant trying to be more than what you are. Why? Because the master knew what it was or knew what you were when he gave you them talents. He knew exactly who you were how much you could handle, and guess what? He gave them to you anyway. And they said, just do what I taught you. Right? Don't try and be that person. You can't ever be that person because you're you. Just be you. But in the same mindset, along with humility, I know what I'm capable of, which means I know what my best is and what my all is. You know what the master expected out of these servants? Everything that they could do. And not one bit less. You want to know why the first servant made five out of five? Had ten total? Because his ability was he can make five. He didn't come back with four and a half. He didn't come back with three. Why? Because he gave it everything that he had. 
He didn't do any more than he could do. He didn't try to oversell it. He didn't try to go out there and kill himself trying to do something that only the master could do. No, he knew what he could do and he went out and he did it. No less. Humility means I'm not going to try and do something that I don't know anything about. Right? If we were to have a work day around here, okay, and the pastor wanted somebody that could do some carpentry, not me. Yeah. I know how to drive a nail. I know how to make things square sometimes. Okay? But you don't want me. Okay? Now, you want something broken? I'm real good at breaking stuff. Don't even mean to do it most of the time. All right? Bull ain't a china shop. Okay, you want something heavy picked up? I might be able to help you, but if it's too heavy, we're going to call, we're going to call Christian. And then if he can't do it, there's this thing called dollies. And I have a bad history with dollies, but we can get that thing moved. Last time I used one of them stupid things, I needed back surgery. So, what are we saying? Do what you can do. Don't do more. Don't do less. Just do what you can do. Because that's what the master expects out of you. He doesn't expect you to do what the other person does. He just wants you to do what you can do. Okay, so we're not going to get on them talents, on what they are, because you know who you are. Right? In truth, people think way less of themselves than the Lord sees them as. The Lord sees you as being capable of this, but you think that you can only do this. Right, a lot of that, it could be a fear problem like that third servant had. He's so afraid of failure that he didn't think he could do anything. It could be a fear of commitment. Well, if I start this, where's it going to end up? It's going to end up with you and the joy of your Lord. That should be the most important thing for you. Doesn't matter about all the responsibility that might be tacked on. You've been faithful in few, so I'll make you Lord over many. Right? All that should matter is that I want to be in the joy of the Lord. I want to be basking in His approval. I want to be smack dab in the middle of His will. Not an inch outside of it. And doing all that I can do because He means everything to me so I just want to please Him. But, but them abilities that He gave you. You know what ability means? means exactly what we've been talking you can do it you know what abilities God expects you to do the things that you can do that's what ability means so if the Lord gave you blessed you with an ability you know what that means you can already do it don't need no training you don't Yeah, we're going to say it. Okay. I mean, nothing against certain... Right? Some of them, very biblical, straight from the Word of God. It'll do you a whole lot of good. But you want to know what a whole bunch of soul winning classes are? Hogwash. Because they don't give you what the Bible says you need to go out and witness to somebody. They give you a one, two, three, repeat after me. They give you this roadmap map if you didn't say this 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 or if you didn't do it this way then you didn't get saved hogwash you honestly think that Peter and John and all the other apostles sat down with everybody that was saved on Pentecost okay guys here's how you have to tell other people about Jesus no they went out faster than they could wrangle them up telling other people about God, what God had done for them you think that the man Peter and John Acts chapter number 4 walk into the temple of the lame man they said, silver and gold have a none but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ Stand up and walk. Guess he's leaping around the temple doing what? telling other people about what God just done for him nobody had to teach him how to do that okay and it was very effective because guess what everybody took note so much so that the higher ups got involved and tried to you know throw John and Peter in prison but they couldn't, so they just beat them and then told them not to do it again. Guess what they were doing? Preaching about Jesus the next day. What are you saying? When you get saved, you have the ability to tell somebody else about what God did for you. All of us do. No respect to our persons. 
He called all of us to go, which means what? He gave each of us an ability to go. Some go further than others. Some go to more places than other people do. But guess what? We all can't go. But why would he tell us to go if we couldn't tell him what Jesus did for us? Right? Yeah, there's a whole lot of scripture about how to be saved. But what worked for me will work for you. You know what that means? I was under conviction, which means I knew I was lost. I knew that Jesus could save me. And guess what? I asked him, believing that he would, and I got saved. You boil down all the scripture in the Bible, that's it. You got to know that you're lost. But I can't convince somebody they're lost. That's the Holy Ghost job. I can read the Bible until I'm, I'm blue. I don't know how we got off on all this, but I can read the Bible until I'm blue in the face to you. But unless God's dealing with you, you're not going to realize that you need what Jesus did. You know what I can do? I can tell you what the Bible says on how to be saved. Oh, personally, kind of like Romans 10, 9 and 10. You know what that means? If we boil it down, if you ask him to save you and you believe that he will, he'll save you. That's all it is. Man, confess with the mouth, believe in the heart. Guess what? Ask believing, and he'll do it. It's that simple. Right now, we all have that ability to go out and just tell people what Jesus did for me. You know what prayer I said when I got saved? Lord, please save me. And I said it about 900 times while the preacher was right here praying. And I was, hey, I, I'm pretty sure we got this done already. Why are you still praying? I was waiting for him to be quiet. And I'm like, hey, we good now. What are we saying? You don't have to be Billy Sunday to go out and witness to somebody. Your ability is that you can tell someone. You don't have to tell everybody. But when it comes to the things around the house of God, you know what you can do? Something. You have an ability. If your ability is just walking around the building at the end of the night, seeing if somebody dropped a piece of gum wrapper out their pocket and picking it up because you want the house of God to reflect how much you love God. And you love God enough that you don't want trash on the floor. Anybody can do that. Some people have an ability to guard. That ain't me either. But if I'm involved in it, chances are it's going to die. Okay, unless it's a dog, because dogs can eat the same thing that I eat. I'm kidding. I feed them dog food. But we have, some people have the ability to guard. Guess what? We got flowers all around here. They don't grow on their own. Now see, sometimes your abilities line up with the things that you're passionate about. And he asked the Lord to use you in this capability. But guess what? You've got to be faithful and little before he'll make you Lord over much. Do what you can do. You say, does that mean that God's going to give me another... He'll let me do what I want to do? Hey, if a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good thing, but not everybody can be a pastor. Now, you may desire to do it for the Lord's honor and glory, but maybe he knows that your ability and your aspirations, they haven't caught up with each other yet. He's still training you on a few things. He's still working on some of your abilities. So just do what you can do now. You know what I can promise? can't promise that you'll ever get to do what you desire to do. But I can promise that you can enter into the joy of your Lord. And I can promise that if you're faithful and little, he'll make you Lord of much. But he's saying, you'll reap where you haven't sown. He said, well, why is that person so blessed? Because they're just faithful. You know why those servants got to live in the master's house, wear the master's clothes, eat the master's food, tend to the master's business? You know why they got to do that? Because they were faithful. What happened when the third servant wasn't faithful? He said, cast them into outer darkness where there's weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. He says, kick him out the house because he's not faithful. He couldn't be faithful in the littlest thing. So I have no use for him. If you want to be used of God, guess what? You got to be faithful. And I don't know where this thought just came from either, but we're going to say it. 
It doesn't matter how faithful you are to the things that you think are important. If you're not faithful in the small things too, you're still not faithful. You're either always faithful or you're not faithful. You can't be faithful in one thing and unfaithful in the other. Guess what you are? Unfaithful. It's like right or wrong. It's black and white in God's eyes. Doesn't matter how right you are, if there's any wrong, you're still wrong. Any unfaithfulness is all unfaithful. He said, Brother Jordan, that's harsh. But Jesus was always faithful to the will of the Father. Faithfully completed the plan of salvation that was laid before the foundation of the world. If he was even this much unfaithful, we wouldn't have salvation. He wouldn't have been the Son of God. Couldn't have been the spotless lamb. He said, well, Brother Jordan, I just can't be 100%. It takes a lot of effort. I don't have all that energy all the time. But maybe you're trying to be faithful in too much. He said, be faithful in what he commanded. He said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. What's the story of the kingdom of heaven? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and these things will be added unto you. You know what that tells me? These things need to be faithful first. Then all this. Seek ye first the kingdom. Well, what's the kingdom of heaven? God's giving you talents. And you know the thing? You know what each one of them talents? You know what value they had? They all were the same value to the master. Each one of them five, all of them worth the same amount. Guess what that one was worth? Just as much as any one of them five. Guess how much those two were worth? Just as much as any of the other talents. He didn't see amount. He saw quality. He said, you've shown that you can be faithful in this much, but each one of those bits, just as important, just as valuable. The master doesn't look at what he's entrusted you with. You know what he's entrusted us with? Himself. Right? Jesus is just as valuable in God's eyes as anything else. And he gave you the same amount of Jesus that he gave me. You know what makes the difference? The ability. You know what he gave to you? Ability. So if he gave us what we needed and he gave us the ability to go out and do it, Literally, if, if it were a math problem, guess what God's given us? Everything. He gave us a measure of faith so that we could be faithful. You know the only thing that He can't give us? The will to do it. We've got to come up with that. We've got to get the burden. We've got to get it through these thick heads of ours that this is more important than anything else going on out here. Well, it's not very prestigious. doesn't matter. God asked you to do it. Well, nobody's going to see me do it. Good. Because what the Lord sees in secret, He rewards openly. You say, well, I, I can't do much. Nobody asks you to do more than what you can do. I mean, for years, the pastor said, if you can't go out on visitation, you can help put the bags together. What's that? That's what you can do. God will give you responsibility for your ability. And what you're faithful in, he'll bless and he'll reward. So if all of it is the same across the board, what's the determining fact? Me. My will, my desire to go out and do it. You know what it takes to be faithful? You just got to want to be faithful. You know what it takes to use your ability? Just the desire to use it. To fulfill it. You know what the secret recipe to being used of God is? To go out and just do what God asks you to do. No more, no less. Because he promised that whatever we do for him, it doesn't return void. But we'll receive pressed down, shaking, bubbling over. Everything will be fine. What we just got to do, what we can do. And that's it. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.